All right, so what we have in front of us here is called a remote downstream injector bypass. And you can see this loop here. And right here is your uh, chemical injector. Now, a lot of people are running it where the valve is right here. And the uh, injector is on this straight run here. So I don't think that's an efficient way of running a uh, bypass. So my valve is on the straight and the injector is on the loop. So when the valve is off, the pump is on this side. So you're pumping in here. The valve is off. The water has only one place to go, which so it has to turn a sharp 90 right here and go past the injector. Then it loops around here and the loop's fine. And then, then you have another sharp 90 here to go out to your gun where you're applying the chemical. So the issue with injectors and why people started using these bypasses is the hole right here in this main body, we go from 3 eighths of an inch through this main body and it creates a vacuum through a venturi and that hole is only about 75 to 80 thousandths of an inch in diameter which is this I already measured it, so it's the size of the end of this uh, file right there. So there's a hole in there just past the injector, and so the water goes by, shoots really fast, so the uh, uh, atmospheric pressure drops, and that, that's basically a vacuum, and it pulls in the chemical. So that's all fine and dandy when you're putting a chemical on. So if you want to rinse, uh, some people were just putting on a smaller tip at the gun side and then that would automatically close this valve off and then they would rinse through that little orifice which your, your flow is greatly reduced. Uh, so if you've got a 8 gallon per minute machine, you're probably pumping half that or less to rinse. So someone came up with the idea of this uh, injector bypass. So if you go back to the truck, after you've applied your chemical, let's say you applied your chemical just to one side of the house and now you want to rinse, so you got to walk all the way back to the truck, turn your valve on. Now what this does is it creates an easier path for the water to flow for rinsing and it's full three-eighths of an inch and there's no sharp turns it has to make so this is the most efficient way of putting it. So when the water goes past here, there may be, since this side is going to have some pressure and this is going to act kind of as a venturi itself, it'll pull a little bit down this way, but it's not enough to overcome the injector spring, so you're not going to pull a chemical. So in a, in a weird way, it's going to kind of rinse this out because just for the fact of water rushing past this elbow and this being pressurized you might in my eyes have a little bit of water coming back but the venturi won't work in reverse order anyway so this is this becomes uh, out of the loop so to speak so now you're rinsing with full volume <clears throat> the issue is if you're doing four sides of a house and you're applying chemical and then rinsing that, you're walking back to the truck three, four, five times, maybe ten times to keep switching this on and off. So I have looked all over for a valve, a high pressure valve that's uh, actuator controlled or motorized, whatever you want to call it. And the only ones I can find are like $600. $1,200 I've seen. Um, so this is the key. You've got to get get this valve where you can remote control it. So what I did was uh, I bought this ball valve actuator for 20 bucks, and it's 12 volt. And so you hook 12 volt to it. The arm swings 90 degrees. You flip the polarity. It swings back. It's just real simple. Uh, and it's very strong too. I was, I was surprised how strong it was. But um, so it comes with a mount 
the mount goes here and these ball valves these this is a general dn10 ball valve it's got a really tall uh, stem right here so when you put the bracket on that comes with the valve and you put this valve up here where it's going to go this bracket here i'll show you i've already cut it because i'm going to ex extend it but this bracket is about a half inch too short to get this valve where you need it so what i did was i cut this bracket and i'm just i've already got a piece of steel here i'm going to lap weld it right here and leave a half inch gap like so so i'll be welding that up on both brackets to raise that actuator up high enough to clear that stem because what you want to do is the the center pivot of this arm and the stem you want them pretty close to directly over each other that way the pivot point stays the same and um, whenever the the uh, actuator arm turns the problem is with the original uh, handle it gets in the way right here of the mount and also it's not long enough here for this arm to catch so I thought and thought the easiest way and simplest way so what I'm going to do is I bought this uh, ball valve replacement handle you might have one hanging around but uh, so once I mount this I'm, I'll know about where to put this uh, lever or I can bend the lever to get it in these uh, pins here um, but anyway either way I have to put a little spacer right here bolt my handle on once I file it it doesn't fit right now it almost fits so I'm going to file that and then uh, put my motor on it and so this motors 20 bucks this handle was like 450 um, and if you have access to a welder or um, you can braze or you can you can take this and have them extended up or maybe you come up with a different idea on how to mount this you know make it your own but uh, so anyway for about uh, 30 bucks you'll have a uh, have this unit right here together and if you watch my prior video I show how this box here and this remote is 40 bucks and um, I think this one's rated at uh, 300 and 328 feet and that was with the antenna wound up inside so I, I brought the antenna out and so this thing ought to go uh, quite a bit farther than 328 feet it's supposed to go through walls and stuff like that but anyway that's on my prior video I'll leave a link down below to that and all this stuff I get I'll leave a link down below where you can go buy it with the remote control 40 this stuff 30 so 70 bucks you've got a remote control uh, downstream injector bypass so if you already have this guys all you need is this and uh, adapt a handle and maybe a little ingenuity on the bracket but uh, it can be done for that what I'm going to do now is is um, weld this bracket up here and get my valve mounted okay I'm welding outside but uh, this is not a welding class because I'm not the best welder in the world but I've got this side extended and I went ahead and bolted it together this bracket so this side would come out even and now I'm going to tack weld it Okay, it's not perfect, but it's going to hold. Okay, so I took the loop off, and now I just have the valve to work on. So, I just got done extending these uh, ears up a half inch. And so I'm going to mock this up and see if it's high enough here. 
There we go. Okay, so that's uh, lined up really well. So I'm going to see the uh, height of my arm now. Hmm, okay. So I need it down. I need my arm to mount down pretty low so this arm doesn't hit the top of it so about a quarter inch bushing right there and so I'm going to use this uh, PEX fitting right here and cut it off at a quarter inch and it fits on there just perfect Okay, I'm going to flatten it out some. It's like I cut it a little crooked. Okay. So I got my... Uh, bushing at about a quarter inch. I've got my handle that I've uh, used a rat tail file and I've basically just filed the flats off a little at a time but you could take it all out of one side it doesn't matter once I got thinking about it and so now my handle will go on and then mounting nut, retaining nut all right, so we have the handle mounted, so let's see how the actuator mounts. Okay. Like so. I got clearance right here. My uh, pins can catch this lever right here and this bracket is in the center of this end of the valve and that's all seated all right I've got it all uh, tightened on here it's solid so uh, next thing I need to do is let's get this thing straight up in the air is now I need to adjust these pins and squeeze them in on this handle give it just a little bit of clearance and then we can test it out here's how the valve looks all together now th this mechanism right here if you pull it down you can operate this valve manually it re it releases a gear inside. All right, so I'm gonna, I've got it hooked up to my uh, little train transformer here, and let's see how it works. All right, does good. Change the, what I'm doing here is, I have a direction control on here, which all it's doing is, is changing the polarity internally, uh, otherwise you, if you want to return it, you can just uh, reverse the leads. Pretty cool. I'm happy that's going to save me some steps. Now, the next thing to do is I want to go ahead and temporarily hook it into my remote control. And we can see how the whole thing is going to work together. Okay, so this is the insides of the uh, motor controller or lineal actuator controller. Um, anything that you need to have the uh, polarity reversed to uh, make it operate 
forward and reverse basically. So a lineal actuator is just an electric ram that goes in and out. And um, <clears throat> so that's what this valve is. I'd mentioned it before. It's not an auto return valve. An auto return valve only needs power to it. So you, you supply it the power and the handle will move whichever direction you've got it set up. And then when you remove the power, there's a capacitor inside here that stores enough electricity to bring the handle back automatically. It's either a, a capacitor or a small battery. I don't know what they use, but that's the only way they could bring a handle back. So this one is a reverse polarity. So if, if you apply voltage to it, the handle will move in whatever direction you've got it set up. But when you remove the uh, electrical from it, it'll just stay in that position. So this is when you're looking up your, uh, I'll leave a link to this controller down below, but uh, when you look for a controller, you've got to understand that um, you've got to buy the right controller for the mechanism you're using. All right, so this is real simple to hook up. So in here it says these two left pins are for the motor, and this is for voltage in. So for now we're just going to temporarily hook this up. Just make sure that your pins or wires or whatever is not touching right here. And this is just temporarily being hooked up. So this is in no way the final product. But uh, I just kind of like to see it working, I guess. Maybe you guys want to also. So here's my uh, power to the board. And I will just jump in on top here. Like so. All right, so I'll turn my power on. And here's my remote. Let's see what happens. One other thing, uh, on one of my other videos, I showed a, uh, a beacon, a uh, flashing light. And I bought a another one because I wasn't happy with it because I I guess it's my old eyes I couldn't see it really well and all right so I'm going to show you how to hook up your uh, flasher or beacon whatever you want to call it uh, this is this is like $14 on Amazon but it was the cheapest one I could find that uh, had some size to it and it, it appeared to be bright and when I got it here I just quickly hooked it up and man it's bright so we're going to Hook the ground, the black, to ground here. As long as this is grounded somewhere, it doesn't have to be back to this box or back to the source. As long as all your uh, ground sources to the trailer is good, you can ground right to the trailer. So I think going up, I need to be calling for water and down calling for bleach. And I, I think maybe that's what I decided to begin with um, because I'm going to re-letter this I'm going to scratch in here A and B and I think that'd be less confusing than B and A because I'll call water aqua so agua and uh, B would be bleach so let's see if we're so we're already in the uh, bypass position so I do not want my light to come on here. So it's it's sent voltage to run this arm in the on position here, the way I've got it set up. So there's voltage there now. And so all this does is, uh, this remote is reverse the polarity of those two pins through the, the relays. So I can find one here that's on. So that's on. So it's keeping it in the bypass. So I want it to pull chemical. So I want to be alerted when this side of this switch is coming on. So I want to pull chemical. So this is going to be my A button and B button. B for bleach. There we go. So that is uh, quite a deal. So now I'll be able to uh, 
be on the back side of a house and maybe uh, soap it all down. And by the time I get to the other end, it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I need to rinse. I can just go up here and hit A for rinse. And in no time, I'll have clean water. All right, so I wanted you to see the whole assembly put together. This is an injector bypass kit that you can get at any of the uh, power washing stores. And it comes with uh, the valve included. Of course, it's not an electric valve. Now, I searched online and a high, you can find electric valves all day long for 30, 40, 50 bucks. But to find a, one that uh, is rated for high pressure, that seems to be in the UK and China and Japan and I can't find any reasonable US supplier short of a thousand dollars that that has one that'll you know that's electrically actuated and that can take at least three thousand pounds it's ridiculous so uh, there's another company called flow pro solutions and uh, they've got a real slick setup because evidently they ran into the same thing so they they machined out a uh, saddle to fit around here and mounted a uh, commercially built uh, actuator which makes it a lot nicer more professional uh, and, and their kit is there they sell it real reasonable in my opinion for all the research and development and the quality that I see they put in their electrical and stuff so uh, <clears throat> I don't know Flow Pro or anything, but uh, I gotta hand it to them. When I see something that's really nice, I I uh, give them props. I was getting done with the video, and I thought something I didn't ever mention that I know you guys will question me on is this waterproof? This is not waterproof, but it is rainproof. So if it's mounted in anywhere close to this vertical position like this, it does shed the water off. So yeah, if you're going to flood it with water, that you definitely want to cover it with a bag or something. But what I think I'm going to do, uh, just because it's going to be sitting outside in the elements and getting mist and everything else, I'm just going to get a food container and hack it out. I'm not taking anything apart, just hack it out and close it over here and wire it in such a way that all this clears. But just a just a you know big Tupperware or something. And I think that'll... Uh, make that valve last a little longer but now the now the uh the hard part's done because this bracket's already made so you could order two or three of these and have them as a spare hey y'all thanks for watching my videos and and please leave any comments down below you know like you're such an idiot or whatever your hair looks you need to cut your hair something like that so uh something constructive so put that down there in the comments, give me a thumbs up, and if you don't like my attitude, give me a thumbs down, but that tells YouTube that people are uh, watching my videos, you know, whether they like it or not, I guess.